guys just warmed up your voices, but you know what time it is, right? Exercises. Exercises. We gotta warm up our bodies. Everybody stand up. All right, Luke. Hmm. What are we thinking? First exercise. You know, Anna, it hasn't rained in a while. It hasn't rained in a while. No. And some of these lawns are getting pretty crispy. Mm. Yeah. I think we need to warm up with the sprinkler. Oh. You guys know what the sprinkler is? You know the best she kind does. of exercise is dancing? It is. So we're yes. going to do that today. All right. Here we Show go. us how to do it. Okay, so we're going to go. Now faster. Oh, but you have to hit. That's good. That's good. But we got to make sure we get both sides of the lawn. So we're going to switch hands. Quick. Okay, Ooh. now both at the same time. Again. That's good. That's a lot of water. I feel like my arms are properly warmed up. Okay. Yeah, but I think, I think, did you brush your teeth this morning? Yeah, I did. Did you floss? Oh, I didn't. Oh, guys, you didn't floss. Yeah, floss. They floss. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, what are you guys, oh, you know what? Oh, I know, floss. this is a really good dance move. Oh. Okay. So we're just going to. Take it nice and slow. Then we're gonna get a little faster. A little faster. Oh. Okay, okay, keep going. 10 more seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Whew. You guys are so good at that. Oh my goodness. Actually, I didn't do the real flossing this morning. Yeah. So I feel like I need to do that. I had a lot of coffee this morning, so uh, I think I'm gonna. Yeah, you know what? That's probably yeah. a good idea. Oh, yeah, I, I smelled that from right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. You just go do that. <sighs> He's gonna go floss right now. It's okay. We're fine. Okay. So, guys, sit down with me. I got something to tell you. Well, before I tell you, I think we need to go over some Bible points, right? Because we've learned a lot, and we need to keep up on it. So, do you remember two days ago, there were some rocks on the track and some big problems, but we learned that Jesus' power gives us, or helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! And then, what happened yesterday? Yes, trust Jesus! Did you guys hear that one? Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus! Well, today, today is Wednesday, and we got another Bible point. So today, we're going to learn that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Let's say it together, okay? Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. Man, I think we got the best group of VBSers ever, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Oh, get this. I heard some crazy good news this morning. Do you want to hear it? Cam and his crew fixed the track! Yes! I know, and now they can finally go down the mountain. I'm so excited because now people get their M&Ms and it's going to be such a good time. Let's clap. Yeah. Ooh, can you imagine if people didn't get their M&Ms? That would be a problem. I personally love to put them on my popcorn, so... They're kind of important. But, you know, I wonder where Cam is, because I don't think they've left yet. Do you guys see him anywhere? Oh, Cam! We were just talking about you. You were? Yeah. I heard some cheering. Yeah, aren't you excited to finally fix the train and the track and be able to make all those deliveries? Wait, were you, were you guys cheering for me? Finally got the track fixed. Yeah, you it's a did. Good day. And now we can uh, deliver the M and M's. You know. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Oh, look, a squirrel. Cam, why are you hiding? 
fighting. Come on out. Just tell us what's going on. Uh, I'm not hiding, no. Um, you know what, though? I'm not hiding, but if the train conductor asks where I am, just tell him I'm watering my lawn. Cam, you don't have a lawn to water, so why don't you just come on out here? I don't know why you're hiding, but you might as well just come out and tell us right now because we're going to find out eventually. You're right. That's not a good enough hiding spot. Maybe I need a disguise.
Hey, what, what should we do? I don't know, maybe. Huh? I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. You guys think about it. We'll see if we can come up with a really bold move. I hope that helped, Cam. No, that, that really helped a lot. I've seen a lot of mountain lions, but now that taught me to just roar like one because <clears throat> Jesus can make us bold. So I'm going to go tell that train conductor, I'm ready to go. Good. You guys did a good job helping Cam out and teaching him. Shall we do some more songs? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Give us another song. And you know what? You should be excited because today you get a story 
and you also get a bonus story. You get two stories for the price of one. Woo! But before we tell the stories, I'm going to walk through and I'm going to hand an envelope to your crew leaders, okay? Each person gets an envelope. And inside of the envelope is a name, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about names today. My name is Steven, and the guy sitting back there uh, by all the cameras, his name is also Steven. Does anybody know what the name Steven means? Other than Steven? The name Stephen means crown, like a, like a king. So that's, that's the meaning associated with my name, and don't open those yet. And names have meanings that are associated with them. So who has, uh, crew leaders, go ahead and open up your envelopes and show the name on the piece of paper inside to your crew and see what the name says. Who has name number one? And what's the name? Hold on. Name number one is Miss Terry. Oh, you guys know Miss Terry. What are some things you think of when you think about Miss Terry? VBS. She helps with VBS. What else do you think about Miss Terry? She is so nice. She's one of the nicest people I've ever met. Anything else? She is so helpful. She has a servant's heart. She's a wonderful lady. Okay, name number two. Cam Track. Oh, we met Cam, right? He's, he's somewhere around here. What do you guys think of when you hear Cam Track? Train. He likes trains. What else do you think of when you hear about Cam? M&M's. He likes M&M's. He's funny. He's kind of goofy. Okay, what's name number three? Which group had name number three? Professor D. Professor D. We love Professor D. She teaches us so much about science. What else do you think of when you think Professor D? She is the coolest. Science is awesome. What else? She is very smart. She helps a lot of people with her brains. She is also a nice lady. Yeah, we're lucky to have Professor D around. Okay, how about name number four? Which one was that? Olaf. Olaf. You guys know Olaf from Frozen? What, what do you think of when you hear the name Olaf? Olaf. Warm hugs? <laughs> That's not very good for a snowman, huh? What else do you think of? He is funny, yeah? He's a snowman, too, yeah? Oh, yeah. So isn't that funny? Names have meanings associated with them, right? And when you hear a name, you think about things about that person. And, and what was name number five? Jesus. That's the last name. And what do you guys think of when you hear the name Jesus? What do you guys think? That you guys open this up. Yeah, he's the son of God. What else do you think of? Uh, he is a king. What else? He is our Savior. Yeah, what else? He did. He came back from the dead. Yeah. And, and what else? What, what is something about Jesus that we've been talking a lot about this week at VBS? Yes. And why do we trust Jesus? Because of his, because of his power. That's right. Jesus' name means power for people who follow him. So, we're going to hear a story today about the name of Jesus. And I'm going to sit down in this chair to tell the story. So, the story begins, Peter and John, these were two of Jesus' followers. They were going up to the temple to pray at about three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried. Now, when you and I say the word lame, we mean like lame. But what's another meaning for the word lame? Yeah, it means he was crippled. He couldn't use his legs. It was really hard. He said he was lame from birth. Can you imagine being born and living your whole life and not being able to walk or run or play? It was really, really hard. And it said that his friends carried him to the temple and set him by the gate where lots of people walked in to pray. And, you know, today, if you're crippled, if your legs don't work or some other part of your body doesn't work, that is so hard. 
and you have to overcome challenges that other people don't have to overcome. But you can also live a really full life and you have lots of opportunities for things you can do, even if part of your body doesn't work. But back during this time, if your legs didn't work, that meant you couldn't work. There was hardly anything you could do. You didn't even have a wheelchair to get around. You had to have other people carry you around. And there was very little you could do. And your only way to get money to feed yourself was to beg. So this man's friend set him by the gate of the temple so that he could ask for money as people came in. And he saw Peter and John coming in. And he asked for some money. And Peter and John looked right at him and said, hey, look at us. They thought, oh, oh good, these guys are going to give me some money. Peter smiled and he said, hey, I don't have silver and gold. I don't have any money for you. But what I do have, I give to you. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And the man's feet and ankles began to feel strong. And then he realized he could bend his legs and then he tried to stand up, and he stood up. And then he tried to go for a walk, and he could walk. And then he tried to go for a run, and he realized he could run, and he could jump, and he started praising God. Oh, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me my legs. I can walk. Look, isn't this wonderful? He started telling everybody else, look, look what happened to me. I can jump and run and walk for the first time in my whole life. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Look at your legs. You just stood up. Isn't that amazing? Everybody, jump three times. One, two, three. You can jump. Isn't that amazing? Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, for my legs. Thank you, Jesus, for my legs. Good, 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 sit down. Can you imagine how excited and happy that man must have been for the first time in his life to be able to do something you and I can do every single day? Oh, he was so happy. He gave thanks to God. He started telling everybody, and they all came to see what happened. And you know what? We're going to tell our next story in a minute. That was the bonus story. But before we do that, I want to take some time to pray. We're going to pray in our crew. So crew leaders, I know you're a little spread out, but if you can find a way to come in front of your crew or behind your crew, take a few minutes to pray, because I think everybody in this room knows somebody who's hurting or who's sick, and who needs the healing power of Jesus in their life. And so, boys and girls, if you can think of a name of someone you know who, who needs that, I want you to share it with your crew leader. And we're going to pray in Jesus' name for healing for that person. And you know, Jesus doesn't always answer our prayer the way we hope. Sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says not yet, wait and see what I'm going to do, but he always wants what's best for us, and he wants us to pray in his name and, and ask for healing for those we love. So we're going to take a few minutes to do that right now to pray with your crews. Crew leaders, just give me a thumbs up when you're done, okay? who we love and who need your healing. We thank you that you love them and we, we ask for healing in the power of your name. Amen. Okay, you guys, that was just the bonus story. That was just the warm-up. Now we have a whole nother story. So this man was just healed. It was amazing and it happened right there at the temple. So everybody saw it happen and they all came running over to, how did this happen? And they, they're looking at Peter and John because they're the ones who said, in the name of Jesus, stand up, right? And Peter spoke to the people and he said, people of Israel, why are you surprised by this? <laughs> and why are you looking at us as though it's by our power that we made this man walk? Now, would you be surprised if you saw a person in a wheelchair just stand up and start walking again? Yeah, I would too. But Peter said, you shouldn't be surprised because it, it wasn't the power of the name of Peter that made that man walk. 
It was the power of the name of Jesus. And Jesus' name is very powerful. So you shouldn't be surprised when amazing things happen when you pray in the name of Jesus. And then Peter did something very brave or very bold. Does anybody remember where the temple was in the Bible? What city? What was the name of the city? That's good, yeah, Jerusalem, okay? So just a couple months before this story happened, Jesus was in Jerusalem. And what happened to Jesus in Jerusalem? Anybody? What happened to Jesus when he went to Jerusalem? That's right, yeah. A lot of people in Jerusalem wanted him dead, and they killed him. And now Peter and John, who were his friends and his followers, are in Jerusalem, and they're talking to some of the same people who wanted Jesus dead. And that would make me very scared. But Peter didn't act scared. Instead, he spoke right to them and he said, people of Israel, you rejected Jesus and you killed him even though he did nothing wrong. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead and we're witnesses. We saw him alive. And it's by faith in his name, in the name of Jesus, that made this man walk, who you know he was crippled his whole life, and now you can see that the name of Jesus, who God raised from the dead, has power. And now brothers, he calls them brothers. Do you remember when when Ananias called Saul brother? Even though Saul was his enemy, Ananias said, no, if you follow Jesus, you're my brother now. And Peter says the same thing to these guys. Even Jesus' enemies, he wants them to be his brothers. He says, brothers, I know that you killed Jesus because you were ignorant. You didn't understand what you were doing. You didn't understand who he really was. But brothers, just repent. Say you're sorry and turn around and follow Jesus. And he says, God will wipe away your sins. Isn't that amazing? These people certainly thought so. They saw that the name of Jesus has power to to make a crippled man walk and Jesus has power to come back from the dead and they said, yes, we want to follow Jesus too and more than 5,000 people started following Jesus. That is a lot of people. I mean, there's only like, what, 50 of us in this room? 5,000 people following Jesus because of this miracle that they saw. But not everybody was happy. That's not the end of the story. After all this happened, the leaders of the people came to Peter and John. The leaders and the priests, the captain of the guard, they brought soldiers, and the Sadducees. That's kind of a funny word. Everybody say Sadducee. Sadducee. The Sadducees were religious teachers. They taught people the Bible, but they didn't understand everything in the Bible, even though they were teachers. And they weren't happy about this message. It says they were annoyed, annoyed that Peter and John were preaching that in Jesus there's a resurrection from the dead. See, they didn't believe that there is a resurrection from the dead. They said once you're dead, you're dead, and you stay dead. And Peter and John are going around saying, no, death is not the end. If you follow Jesus, death is not the end. So why do you think they were annoyed with Peter and John? Yeah, they thought they were liars. And that, just like Saul, they thought that, you know, the, the Jesus followers are doing a bad thing. Because, you know, I just thought of something. I have my wallet. I have $20 in here. Danielle, would you, Miss Danielle, would you come up, please? I want to give you $20, because I've been thinking about what to do with this. And, you know, you're a good lady, and you've been working real hard. I think you deserve the $20. There's nothing in there. It's empty. How did you feel when I told you I had $20 for you? Um, great. Great. And how yeah. did you feel when there wasn't actually $20 in there? Very confused. Yeah, confused and maybe a little sad. Go sit down. That's okay. So what did I just do? I gave Miss Danielle false hope. I told her I had something for her, but I didn't really. And that's what the Sadducees thought Peter and John were doing. They thought they were giving people false hope, saying there's a resurrection from the dead when there really wasn't. And so they arrested Peter and John. Can you believe that? They just helped this crippled man walk, and they got put in jail overnight. And the next day, the leaders called them together and said, listen, you two, by what name or what power did you make that man walk? 
You guys tell me, by what name did they make him walk? Jesus, the name of Jesus. And Peter knew, what a silly question. You guys, you guys saw this, you know what happened. He stood up and he said, are you really putting us on trial because we helped a crippled man walk? That's crazy. But if you really wanna know, I'll tell you, it was the name of Jesus that helped that man walk. And then he was brave again. And he said, you killed him, you leaders of Jerusalem. You wanted him dead and you crucified him. But he came back from the dead and he wants even you to be part of his family. And there's salvation in no one else. There is no other name by which people may be saved. And you know what? That is not a popular thing to say today. And it was not a popular thing to say then. That only one way to be saved and to know God. And that's through the name of Jesus. And it says when the leaders saw the boldness of Peter and John. Jesus' power makes us bold. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They were amazed because Peter and John were common, uneducated men. Boy, that makes me feel good because you know what? You, you all don't have to become pastors or missionaries or Bible scholars to be bold and follow. I hope some of you do because it's a lot of fun. But if you follow Jesus, you're gonna start walking and talking and acting and speaking like Jesus and people are gonna see Jesus' power in you because you follow him. And the leaders saw that these men were with Jesus. They were amazed at his boldness. And they said, you know what? (sighs) Well, we can't keep you in jail because you did a good thing. You helped the guy walk. But when you leave here, no more preaching about Jesus because you're telling lies, you're making stuff up, and you're just gonna cause trouble. So no more talking about Jesus. What do you think Peter and John said? Do you think they said, oh, okay, sorry, we won't anymore? Do you think that's what they did? No. No, they said, listen, I'm sorry, you're our leaders, but we have to obey God instead of you. And that's a really scary thing to do because these are the same leaders who wanted Jesus dead. But Peter and John knew, if my leaders tell me one thing and God tells me another thing, I have to obey God. And this story happened a really long time ago, boys and girls. But you know what, this is still happening today all around the world. Did you know this? Did you know that there are followers of Jesus all around the world whose leaders are telling them, stop talking about Jesus or we will put you in jail, we will hurt your families, we might even kill you unless you stop talking about Jesus. And just like Peter and John, there are followers of Jesus who are saying, no, I'm sorry, we can't stop. We have to share the love of Jesus, even if you're telling us not to. And they're bold because Jesus' power makes us bold. Trust Jesus. Jesus. So, crew leaders, we're gonna pray again and then we're gonna finish up. And this time what I would like you to do, maybe ask one or two kids in your group to pray for the followers of Jesus around the world who are suffering because they're trying to obey him, the good news about Jesus, and then maybe you can wrap up the time and pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world with your kids, okay? Now take two or three minutes.
Okay, thank you so much for praying for our friends around the world, boys and girls. They need our prayers. They need prayers that they will be bold and tell others about Jesus, even when it's scary. And we're gonna finish our story now, and then we're gonna learn the verse for today. So, Peter and John were released, and they went back to the other Jesus followers, and they told them everything that happened. They told them they were arrested, and they said, hey, they said, don't talk about the name of Jesus anymore. So what do you think the other believers told them? Did they say, oh, oh, yeah, you better, shh, shh, don't, don't. Do you think that's what they said? No. What do you think they did? What do you think they did? Yeah, that's right. And do you think that they weren't scared at all? Or do you think they were a little bit scared? They probably were still scared. So where do you think they went for help? That's right, they prayed. It says they prayed together and they said, Sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and everything in them. Lord, you are powerful. So Lord, please hear these threats, these people who don't want us to tell the truth. And Lord, grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Jesus' power makes us bold while you stretch out your hand and perform signs and wonders and miracles through the powerful name of your son, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place they were praying was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke and preached the word of God with boldness. Jesus' power makes us bold. Trust Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Boys and girls, we're gonna pray for you. I'm gonna have your crew leaders pray for you one more time in just a minute because Jesus' power makes us bold so that we can tell others about Jesus. And you know what? Not everyone is going to want to hear it. Some people who you want to tell about Jesus will be like the Sadducees. They will say, you know what? No, I don't wanna hear that. You're just making stuff up. People don't come back from the dead. That's a lie. They, oh, there's no God. And maybe there's a man named Jesus, but he's not God. They're not gonna wanna hear it. And you know what, that's okay. You don't have to argue with those people. You don't have to tell them, no, 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 you're wrong. You know what, Jesus, when he told people the good news and they didn't want to hear it, he, he still loved them, but he, he didn't argue with them. He just went and he found some people who did want to hear the good news. And there's gonna be other people who are not gonna like to hear that there is no other name by which people may be saved than the name of Jesus. There's gonna be people who say, no, there's lots of religions. There's lots of ways to God. Yours isn't the only way, but if you follow Jesus and you know that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, then you can speak the truth. You can be bold and say, no, Jesus is the only way. And you don't have to argue with those people or make them feel stupid because they believe something different, but you can still speak the truth with boldness. And boys and girls, I really hope that what happened to Peter and John never happens to you. I hope that you never have to choose, choose if you're going to obey your leaders or obey God. I hope you can do both. But if your leaders ever tell you, don't speak in the name of Jesus, I am going to pray that you'll have the boldness to tell the truth about Jesus even when it's scary and to be bold because Jesus' power makes us bold. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so in just a minute, Miss Jessica is going to come and teach us our Bible verse. Before we do that, crew leaders, just take 30 seconds. What I would like you to do is just pray in the name of Jesus and name each person in your crew and pray that they would be bold to tell the good news about Jesus, and then we'll do our Bible verse. Okay, let's pray. Okay, is everyone finished praying? All right, so we're gonna learn another Bible verse today. 
It's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Does anybody know who Isaiah was? Who was he? That's okay. Do you know? He was a prophet, prophet. yeah. And so uh, he was, um, God told him in chapter 40 of Isaiah, 40, 29. Everybody say that. Isaiah 40, 29. Why do you think it's important that we know the numbers? Isn't it just important to know the words of the verse? Why do we need to know the numbers? Yeah. Exactly. So you can find it in the Bible and so you know what part of the Bible you're reading. It's important that you know that these verses, that this verse, Isaiah what? Good. That it comes from a prophet And it's important that you know what is being said around the verse so you understand what it means, okay? So in chapter 40, it starts by saying, God says, comfort my people. And then he says, shout. And Isaiah asks, what should I shout? And he says, shout that the people are like grass and they're like flowers that fade. Do you ever feel weak like grass or like a flower that fades? It says, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord is forever. So we might be weak, like grass or flowers, but God's power is forever, and God's power makes us bold. Trust Trust Jesus. Jesus. And then it goes on to talk about God's power in creation. It says, who held the oceans in his hand and who measured the heavens with his fingers? God did, because God is that powerful. And then it says, Uh, let's see, in verse, where did it go? Oh, in verse 26, it says, look at the heavens and the stars. Do you ever go stargazing at night and look up at the stars? And did you know that it says here that God calls them out and he counts them and he names them? That's pretty powerful, right? And then we get to our memory verse for today. I'll lead into it. It says, Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth? He never grows faint. He never grows weary or tired. No one can understand or measure all of his understanding. And our verse for today is he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And it's important that you know all these things about the verse so that when you think of that verse, you'll think of this whole chapter. And remember, oh yeah, God wants to comfort his people, and God created this whole big world, and us people, we're just kind of like grass or flowers, but our power comes from God, because God's power makes us bold. Trust Jesus. Jesus. So everybody stand up. The first part of the verse, we're gonna do motions like flowers. So the first part goes, he gives power to the weak which is us. So we're going to start down here, okay, because we're going to remember that people are like grass, but it's God that gives us power. So we're going to grow into a flower. He gives power to the weak. Now you say it. He gives power to the weak. Okay, let's do that again. I'll do it first, and then you guys follow, and I want to hear you really loud, okay? He gives power to the weak. Good job. And then the second part is, and strength to the powerless. And for that, I'm going to read you the last verse, and I want you to tell me if you recognize it from one of our songs. It says, even young people will be exhausted, and young men will give up, but those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Does that remind you of one of our songs? Yeah, something about eagles. So the second part of our verse, the first part is he gives power to the weak because we're growing like uh, like flowers. And then the second part is and strength to the powerless. Good. Let's do it one more time all together. Uh, He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. One more time. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Good, so when you say that verse, where is it from again? Isaiah 40, 29. I want you to think of that whole chapter, God's comfort and God's creativity and God's power that makes you bold. Trust Jesus. Okay, I think we're gonna be dismissed now and go to your small group time.
Are you guys ready for the rest of the day? Yeah. All right, well, we're going to get to it. Okay, so where is, you know what, what animal should we do today? Mm. Uh, an alligator? Oh, an alligator. Yeah. yeah, let's do an alligator. Who's Who can do an alligator? We got a lot of alligators There's here. a lot of alligators. All right, blue team, do you know where you're going? Yeah. You're going to the gym. Head to it. Okay, well, we just learned about eagles, so let's see who can be the best eagle now. Ooh. Oh, we got some active eagles over here. They're, yeah, they're screeching. I hear them. They're screeching. I hear them, but we, I think we have more of them over here that are flying. I feel like, I think we're going to okay. go with the uh, red team. Red team, you're red headed. Team. Head to the fellowship ball. All right, let's see. Green, oh, it was good. I got way more out than I thought was there. Yeah, it was, uh, I need to do that more often. Okay, let's see. What else, what else? Hmm, can we see, what, Anna, what do you think? My favorite animal is an elephant, oh. so can I see some elephants? Good elephants. Those are some pretty elephant sounds. Hey, look, Sandy's here. Woo! Okay, you guys are going to the seminar area, so you can head to it.
Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting. To lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust. Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust. Hi boys and girls, this is day three of Vacation Bible School and uh, today our project is going to remind us uh, about what we're talking about all week, Jesus' power. So what we are going to make is an old-fashioned train engine. It says right here, Jesus' power pulls me through, well, that's what we're talking about all week, and then the verse for today, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. In our story today, when Jesus helped the disciples tell other people about uh, him. So what we're going to do is we have a white piece of paper with the engine. We have some circles to cut out and glue on to make the wheels to the engine. And then we have lots of triangles. And if I counted correctly, everybody has more triangles than they need to use so that you would have some choices about where to put them. When I made mine, I made them into different shapes. I made a diamond, I made a square, I made a bigger triangle. You need to lay all your triangles out on the white part to decide how you want it to be. 
And after they are all on there, then, we're gonna, then you need to glue them on one at a time. When I tried to glue, put a lot of glue down and then put the triangles down, it didn't work and they fell off. So you need to decide how you want them to be, pick them up one at a time and glue them on. So if I were going to be doing that, I would put some glue on the back of this triangle. And then I would, this one is easy because you have to match it up. But then the next part, if I had maybe a blue one and a yellow one, I would have to pick them up one at a time and put the glue on the back. And then when you're all done, you'll have a picture to remind you that Jesus' power pulls us through.
Hello, boys and girls from around the world. Today is day three of VBS. Again, I am Miss Terry. I am Children's Ministries Director at Christ Community Church, and I am so glad you're watching. If you're watching um, and you haven't let me know that you're watching, have your mom or dad send me an email. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to do a shout out for you. I hope that you enjoyed this morning, the skits, the song and dance, so much fun and the story time and the Bible verse. And I just want to remind you that um, God gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And I love the story about the lame man. I hope you get to watch it if you haven't watched it yet because there was more than one story. The name of Jesus that helped the lame man walk is the same Jesus that we pray to and that we end our prayers often in Jesus' name. And I'm going to do that today. I'm going to pray for each of you. And I just want to remind you that when you're afraid, sometimes I bet you get lonely too, that you can pray. You can pray any time to God, Jesus. And he will help you. He will comfort you. He will remind you that he loves you. You are so special. Each and every one of you has a name, a special name that your mom and dad picked out for you. And Jesus loves you, and he knows you by name. And do you know what else? He knows how many, how many hairs are on your head. Have you ever tried to count the hairs on your head? Well, Jesus loves you so much. He knows how many because God created you. I just want to remind you that Jesus makes us bold and so i hope that you're watching i hope that you'll let me know and i'm just going to pray with you now dear jesus we thank you so much that you love each and every one of us that you love caleb and ryan and noah samuel and warren and eloise you love annabeth and levi and evie and micah and reimer and josiah and lizo and Lei, leah and Caleb, and Levi, and Elena. You love Josh, and Atticus, and Jedediah, and Chloe, and Skylar, and Elisar, and May, and Amos, and Kate. You love each and every boy and girl, and their moms and dads, and we're so thankful that you do. We thank you that we can come to you and pray anytime, and ask you to help us to be bold, ask you to help us when we're sad, and I pray for every boy and girl that they would learn a lot this week during VBS. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope to see you tomorrow for day four. Hope you're having fun.
213, 214, 215, 216, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Oh, oh, I think I'm up to 300. Oh, this is cool fun, isn't this? How many of you guys love playing with these punch balls? That's a lot of energy, isn't it? When I go boom, it goes whoosh way out, and then it comes back, and my hand hits it again, and it goes way out, and it comes back. But if I just sit it on the table, is it going to do anything? Oh, well, okay, it's going to fall. Let's say this ball. Is this ball going to magically start rolling? Has it just been sitting there this whole time? It could be doing something, right? But it's not. But when I punch this, this balloon is doing something, right? It's moving. So we're going to talk about two different words today. Potential energy. OK? So potential. See these balls? They have the potential to move, but right now they're not. Then we have what's called kinetic energy. Now that's probably not a word you've used before, is it? So let's try and say that word, kinetic. And it starts with a K. Kinetic is the energy in motion. It's the movement. And there's lots of different things that can move. Right now, I see most of you guys are in kinetic energy. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Oh, you're moving. OK, show me potential energy with your bodies. Oh, let me see kinetic. Let me see potential. Let me see potential. Oh, I caught some of you guys. Almost like a Simon Says, huh? So do you know that energy can do great things? Think of this. Now, you got to really use your imagination. Think of this as a big, huge wrecking ball. You know, those big, huge steel balls on the end of a chain, on a crane? Now, yes, they smash down buildings. Now, if that wrecking ball were just sitting next to a wall, is that wrecking ball going to break that wall? No, it has the potential to. But it doesn't, does it? It needs a little energy to make it move so that it can do its job, its work. Now, your experiment today is going to be fun. But you have to make sure when you do this, you're not in the house. Because you could get in lots of trouble, OK? So if you're at home, don't try this right away in the house. Try it only when you're outside. Now, I have a ball. I have a stick. Is this ball about, that's about three feet high, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to just drop the ball. And I want you to tell me how high up the ball goes on the stick. OK? And we'll kind of try and figure this out. All righty. I'm going to drop it. Everybody watching? OK. Did the stick come all the way back up to 36 inches? Did it come up to 30 inches? Or, or did it maybe come up to like 15 inches? About up to here? Let's try it again. and Let's see how high it went. Oh, about up to there. So about 20 some inches. So it didn't come back up that high. Now, what if I gave it 
some energy. It's going to go higher? Oh, so if I give it some of my energy, I can make it do more than what it did before, right? So if I, uh oh, I better back up. I don't want to hit anybody, right? If I were to go and go, oh, did it go? The, well, I'm almost six feet, so did it go taller than me? Yeah. Well, let's put this ball back. Let's see. Does it work the same with all the other balls? We'll have to find out. Okay, here's a tennis ball. Going to drop it at 36 inches. Oh. It, it came up about right about here, right? Or it, it didn't come up too high, right? What happens if I add my own energy to it? Will it go higher? There we go. Now, I'm wondering here, what would happen if I put, instead of using my energy, I let the balls use each other's energy. I am going to, yes, I'm going to use kinetic energy. I am going to take, now, did you just see that? Am I able to balance a ball on a ball? Are you guys, oh, well, I'm using it with a little tool. Now, when you do this at home, you need to go and get an empty toilet paper tube or a paper towel tube. Don't empty the toilet paper just to get the tube. Wait and be patient. And then you just cut a skinny little piece off. Not too big, because we don't want this much. That's way too much. We only want a skinny little piece. Oh, not even an inch, like about a quarter of an inch. Now, I put that on the ball, and then I'm putting the other ball on. Okay, and if you notice, now I can stack them. Now, we're going to put it at 36 inches. And let's see what happens. I'm going to just drop it. You think it'll come back up to 36? Both balls? The bottom ball? Top ball? Let's see. Whoa! It went over. Pump. Don't worry about the ball. Just let it be. Now, did you see it? It shot out. And do you know why I said earlier, don't try this in the house? That could have been a, your mom's china cabinet. We don't want to break the glass on that, right? Now, we have our tennis ball. We have a golf ball. Do you think the same thing will happen with the two of them? Well, let's, let's first check out this ten, the golf ball. See how high this golf ball falls. I'm going to use... A yellow, a white one. Okay, we'll just see how far. Oh, that's kind of boring, isn't it? Doesn't go very far at all. Now, in your bags that you'll be taking home, you happen to have a golf, a tennis ball and a golf ball. Just so you know, what I did on my tennis ball, and you might need your mom and dad to help you, is I put a little bit of glue on this. And that glue is going to hold my golf ball in place because you know what? If I put this on and then try to balance, the golf ball is going to roll all over the place. So let's give this a try. Whoops. I'm just looking to make sure. Now, if I accidentally have it a little bit tilted, it might go straight over there. If I have it perfectly straight up and down, it should just shoot. You guys ready? Should we do a countdown? Do a countdown? Three, two, one. Oh! Failed! I failed miserably! Oh, 
Am I supposed to? I, I should have been perfect on that, huh? Do you know what? When you're a scientist, you have to try things over and over and over again. Let's see if we can get this one to work. Three, two, one. Oh, whoops, wrong direction. Okay. But did you see energy was transferred? That little golf ball, when I bounced it on its own, it didn't do much, did it? But the energy from when this tennis ball hit the ground, which you didn't see, because we don't have the slow motion thing, is this tennis ball kind of squished, and then it bounced back, and as it bounced back, it hit the golf ball on top and went boom, and it did an energy transfer. It made it bold. It made it do something that it couldn't do on its own, right? That golf ball, when I bounced it, it couldn't go that far on its own, could it? It needed help to become bold. Now, if I were to add three balls together, four, whoo-hoo, but if I were to put in a super ball, a, you know, a bouncy ball, Oh, the energy transfer. I probably could make a hole in the ceiling, huh? If I got it going up just right. Now, I need you guys to know some things. Science and the Bible, they go together. God's word has helped numerous scientists over the years to discover things that they would have never been able to have discovered on their own. And God's word made them bold. There was a scientist back in 1800s. His name was Lieutenant Matthews. He was a sailor, and he got his leg hurt, and he couldn't sail anymore, but he loved being out in the ocean. And he read a verse in Psalms that talked about, let me quickly get it here, Psalm chapter 8, and I should have highlighted the verse. It talks about where is the paths and the oceans. Okay, and it says, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and all that swim the paths of the seas. And Lieutenant Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Lieutenant Maury, he was like, paths in the sea? So do you know what he did? He, because he couldn't sail anymore, he had the men send him his logs, 35, not 1,000, not 100,000, 35 million logs. That's a lot of stuff to read through. And he charted everybody's logs, and he found out that there are currents like rivers in the ocean, to make people be able to travel faster across the seas. And he read it from the Bible. And do you know what? The whole time he was doing all of his work, there was people around him going, really, Lieutenant Murray, really? You're going to do what? Are you trying to prove this Bible is true again? And he kept on going, yeah. God's word is true. Do you know, do you remember when they talked about the, um, Adam and Eve and that ribbing and that God took a rib out? Do you know because of that, we have miracles being ha taken place? Surgeons now can take, they open up, there's a little casing around the rib, and they literally are able to take out the rib, seal back that piece, and that piece is called perosteum, and they seal it up, and guess what? The rib regrows, and they can do it over and over again, and the rib continues to regrow. God designed it. It's in the Bible. The Bible is true. The Bible has so many things like that. 
so many things. I was healed. Do you guys know a year ago at this time, I was losing my right arm, and I had a lot of pain, and I knew I had ner uh, um, uh, stuff wrong in my neck and in my lower spine, and then come January, I, my left leg started dragging, and so I couldn't bring it all the way forward. It would just come up a little bit like this. But do you see me today? I'm able to lift up my arms. I'm able to clap because God's word, who has given boldness to scientists to learn new things about our bodies, he's given them wisdom and knowledge. There's a term that you won't probably hear, but I'm going to tell you. Christian scientists, they believe that God's word is true and that God's word will prove all these things. And do you know there's a lot of scientists out there right now that go, there's no God. Things just happen on their own. But God's word is true, and the scientists are showing and proving. Even though they're not being allowed to speak, they're being bold and they're still pursuing. So I want you guys to know, you guys, all of you out there, can become a scientist, a Christian scientist, and discover things in the Bible, little phrases, and do experiments with it and prove continually over and over that God's word is true. Now, we got something over here going on, right? What's this up here for? There's a brick. Ooh, 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 look at this. Okay, this is the offering yesterday. Nope, not moving anything. Oh my, oh, who emptied their piggy bank? Sheesh, that's heavy. Let's watch this. Oh, 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 oh. did you guys, it moved, it moved. Should I put a second brick in? Do we have enough, do you think, to make it come down? All right, we'll put in a second brick. Holy cow. Oh, Lord. What a blessing. Just one day. You guys did this. Woo. I think tomorrow I might have to have four bricks in. We, we get, tomorrow's Thursday. Do you guys think you get, that you can bring in enough coins to lift up four bricks? Yeah. All righty, awesome. Come on up, Kathy. Thank you, guys. Back. 
working hard, it's the power. Yeah, God's power. So don't hold back, no, don't hold still. God is here and He is real. Take four steps to the left, to the left. One, two, three, four. Turn it around and move to the right. Now take tiny little jumps, four to the front. Four jumps back, but you better look back. Let's do it all again right now. Take four steps to the left, to the left. One, two, three, four. Turn it all around and move to the right. Now take tiny little jumps. Four to the front. Four jumps back, but you better look back. One, two, three, four. Now freeze. And everybody clap your hands. Now stop. Nice. Good job. Sorry, guys. I had my mic turned on, but not well, so I had to redo it. Oh no, all aboard, I missed the whistle. Here we go, ready? This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory, this train. Oh, there was the whistle. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory, this train. Now we're going to go uphill. Okay, now. Oh, this is harder. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory, this train. Uh oh, now we're at the top. Oh, now I know why Cam wasn't so excited. This train is bound for glory, this train. Ah! This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. Oh, this train. Stop. This train. It keeps going. This train. Woo. We made it. Woo. We should have maybe taught Cam that one, but that might have scared him. I don't know. What do you think? Hard to know. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone. In you alone. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. Give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. I will. I will put my hope in you, Lord. You alone are everything I need. My hope is in you alone, in you alone. I will put my hope in you, Lord. You alone are everything I need. My hope is in you alone, in you alone. God of heaven and earth. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. Give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. I will, I will put my hope in you, Lord. You alone are everything I 
need. My hope is in you alone, in you alone. God of heaven and earth, God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hands. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. God of heaven and earth, God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hands. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone. In you alone. Good job. You guys rocked it. Let me hear you out there. Nice. A little bit more fun tomorrow, right? Okay, so we're going to review some Bible points. Okay, so who remembers what Monday was? Do you know? Yes, Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus! Okay, and who remembers what we did yesterday? Gives us hope. Yes, Jesus' power gives us hope. Trust Jesus. Okay, and today we learned what? Yeah. Helps us be? Yes, Jesus' power helps us be bold. Trust Jesus. You guys are awesome. You know, we didn't even, we didn't only learn some Bible points, but we also learned a Bible verse. So, I think I need a helper, and I think I'm going to pick someone different today. Naomi, you want to come up and practice the verse? And then, Naomi, you can pick one other person to come help you do the verse. Give Melina a round of applause. Don't forget to practice that tonight. So tomorrow when you come back, you'll be pros. Okay, everybody. You know what time it is? Shout out. Time. It is time shout for shout outs. And what Woo. are we gonna do after every single day? Woo. We got, we got more more today. today. All right, so we're gonna need our woos to be extra loud, okay? All right, here we go. Caleb. Woo. Ryan. Woo. Noah. got a few announcements and then tomorrow you're going to come back and have a whole bunch of more fun and learn some more bible stories and sing some more songs and find out if cam ever got up and over the mountain but luke what do you have for us well remember tonight to practice our verses we want to make sure that you guys did such a good job today bring bring off. Off. we got two bricks off the ground today two bricks right but can we get three, we get three or three four? Four. Four. Four? Four? Three four four Wow. Well, you guys know what that means, right? What do you have to bring? Money. Yeah, and where is that money going? Missionaries. Yeah, let's help out our missionaries. Okay, so what time are we going to arrive tomorrow? 8.45! You guys got it. You guys are on top of it. 
Now, you know what's left to do before we head out today? It's time to pray. Miss Anna, can you pray for us, please? I sure can. Okay, shh. We're going to pray now. Everybody close your hands and your eyes. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you so, so much that we have the opportunity to come here and have fun and learn more about you. I pray that as we leave today that we remember everything that we learned and that we, re that we remember that your power gives us the strength to do hard things and that you give us hope and that we can be bold. And sometimes maybe even being bold means telling other people about you. So I pray that we do just that and we go home and um, get ready for another fun day at VBS tomorrow. In your name, amen. amen. Okay, what animals do we have, Luke? I think our first one that we're going to do is what group can be the best? Monkeys. Monkeys. <laughs> wow, I think green. Green. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track go 